What I've done here is I've hooked up this crappy little voltmeter to one of the signals to the KDSS accumulator um, solenoid. So this is the signal that tells the solenoid to lock. Signal's low, I'm in free float. When the signal is high, I am in KDSS lockout, which means I have normal sway bars. So let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, let's see what happens when we go 12 miles an hour. All right, so we're sitting here at six miles per hour. The signal is still low as expected. Let's ramp up the speed. Track's gonna kick in because it's on jack stands and it's not happy about it. Um, let's go over 10. All right, we're doing 15, 20 miles per hour and KDSS has not engaged. Huh, I wonder why that is. It's because that's not how the system works. It's much more complicated than that. Hey guys, this is going to be a kind of a long nerdy video um, dispelling some of the misconception and misinformation about the KDSS system on the 2019 GX460. Um, so I'm going to try to go into some detail. This is the best diagram I found to really explain the logic behind how the system works. And it kind of shows right here in this Toyota documentation um, that you're kind of being misled by these companies that are selling you these uh, KDSS mods. Uh, not only are they overpriced and overcomplicated, you can achieve the same thing with a simple fuse switch. Um, they're also not complete in their documentation on their website. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, this is Toyota documentation from the Toyota Tech Manual for how the KDSS system works. Um, Kai from Tinker's Adventure does an excellent video on everything about KDSS. Please watch it first and then watch this video. There's a link in the description. Uh, one thing I want to add um, to his video description, so he goes over this top part of the diagram here. One thing I want to point out um, real quick is that even with these accumulator solenoid valves shut, so the accumulators are locked out of the system, the GX460 can still have cross axle flex, meaning if this is the front wheel um, KDS cylinder, this is the rear KDSS cylinder, fluid can flow from the top of one cylinder into the top of the other one and vice versa on the bottom. So if your front wheel, front driver's wheel is traveling up, that means your um, rear driver's wheel will be traveling down in a cross axle situation so the fluid would flow this way and then it would flow this way so even with these accumulator valves shut you still have the the basis of kdss um, what the accumulators do and the accumulator valves is it allows the pistons to operate independently and kai does some testing in his video to show you that um, so i don't need to go into that too much what i want to focus on down here is this bottom part of the graphic this is the switch timing. So this tells you the inputs that the logic uses to control these accumulator solenoid valves up here. So everyone that sells you these KDSS mods and all the uh, KDSS bros in the forums will tell you that anytime you're over 12 miles per hour, these accumulator solenoid valves are shut and that you should buy their product because that means they won't be shut over 12 miles per hour. I'm here to tell you that that's wrong. Um, it's documented very clearly right here, and I did some testing on my truck. I'll show you in a little while um, to prove it to myself, separate from this documentation. So what really happens is that um, the KDSS, accumulator solenoid valve operation, depends on a couple different variables. Vehicle speed is one of them, and it's the most important variable, but there's also steering speed and lateral acceleration rate. The steering speed one is pretty simple. If you're under 12 miles per hour, the... Um, accumulator solenoid valves are open unless you have acceleration but just steering speed here um, they're open if you go over 12 miles per hour they're closed if you also have five degrees per second of steering speed if you don't the KDSS accumulator actual actuator solenoid valves are actually open so this right here is why when I was doing my initial testing hitting speed bumps and potholes I didn't feel a difference between um, KDSS locked out and the KDSS mod because there was no difference to feel now most people trick themselves into feeling a difference because their brains are expecting a change because they paid money for a modification so they expect to feel something so therefore they feel it the human brain is not very scientific that way but I did some testing that you'll see to prove to myself that there was no difference and then I found this chart which is like oh duh of course there's no difference anyways lateral acceleration rate is another thing that will cause the accumulator solenoid valves to shut so it actually has two set points. Um, if you're under 12 miles an hour and you experience 0.4 Gs, so about half the force of gravity laterally, meaning like pushing you into the door panel, the solenoid valves will shut. I've never heard anyone even talk about that, so that's pretty interesting that's documented right here. If you're over 12 miles per hour, you only need 0.2 Gs to shut the um, solenoid valves. 0.2 Gs isn't a whole lot. Um, so basically the way this works is if you're over 12 miles per hour, and you have over 0.2 Gs, 
or you have over five degrees per second of steering rate, then the valve shut. And I actually set up my truck to prove this to myself, and I'll show you how I did that right now. So this wiring diagram right here shows you the wires going from the KDSS ECU to the accumulator housing assembly. These two wires right here are the ones we're interested in. These are what actually shut um, these solenoid valves right here. So they're um, usually low. When the signal goes high, it shuts the valves. I tapped into this light green wire, hooked it up to a cheap voltmeter I had laying around, taped it to the dash, and then I had an indicator on the dash to tell me exactly when the KDSS accumulator valves were shutting. Um, here is another diagram that goes through and shows you all of the wires in case you need it. Um, by the way, this is the 10 amp KDSS fuse that I wired a switch into in order to disable my system. And all my testing, it does the exact same thing as the expensive um, harness and the with the two little with the two little relays on it that everyone's so proud of that you need to be a master electrical engineer to figure out. These are DC circuits, guys. This stuff's easy. Um, anyways, so this fuse is what I pull to kill the KDSS logic and keep these solenoid valves open at all times. I'll show you how I did that in some videos. Um, this down here is just a fail-safe function chart. This kind of documents that you gotta have um, at least one front speed sensor for the system to function. If you lose the accelerometer, it'll use steering angle and vice versa. Um, and here's some other interesting documentation I found digging around in case you need it. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into the videos and show you how I tested all of this. So put together this little contraption that'll plug into the KDSS fuse. It has a 10 amp fuse in line with it and a fuse holder and it gives me a switch so I can turn on and off the KDSS power at will while driving it. This will help us investigate whether or not this is a worthwhile mod. Um, and if I want to do it permanently, I'll add a nice little dash switch labeled, you know, KDSS disable. KDSS fuse is right here. It's the 10 amp between the two 20 amps with a 30 beneath it. So it should go 25, 30, 20, 10. You want to pull that 10. Right now I've got the KDSS system disabled with my, you know, five minute fuse hack, um, which by the way, costs less than $10. I'll put a link for the parts you need to do this mod in the description below. I have this indicator to tell me when KDSS is locking out. I can test my mod of using a fuse to the KDSS computer and see if that does indeed uh, keep it in float mode at all times. Everyone said that was a bad idea and it wouldn't work, but we are about to test it. So I'm going to go ahead and press my button. So I should get a KDSS light on the dash any second now. Any second now. Yep, there it is. And my signal is low. So that indicates that the KDSS system is not actuating. It's not locked out. I'm going to go through this corner here and we're going to see if it goes high like it did before. Oh, what do you know? It's staying low. Double swap, so I'm going to reconnect the fuse with the switch basically. And we should see the light go off in a second. It should clear itself while driving. Okay. And now KDSS is active as soon as I go through a corner. On location at a very bumpy trail. We're going to see how often KDSS uh, kicks itself on and engages itself. So I've got wires all over the place. This is really rough on the old skid plates. Oh, I'll take a look at it. Jeez Louise! Sharp edges and it's wet right here so you can see where I was spinning. The holes are spaced out just kind of to trap you. You know what would have really helped in that situation? If I would have remembered to lock the center differential. Oh well. So it's off, it's off, it's off. And as soon as I have to steer, it's gonna come back on. So I apologize for the quality of the video here. The lighting was bad and the GoPro can't even see the screen, but it behaved exactly how I expected it. About half the time in this deep sugar sand, um, the system is locked out. As soon as you start to turn, it locks it in. Pretty simple. As soon as I straighten up for a second, it uh, it, it drops down. It opens up the uh, up, opens up the solenoid. So you can turn a little bit as long as you don't turn the steering wheel too fast. It'll stay disengaged. Interesting. Go back through that same section with our um, KDSS disabled and see if we can feel a difference. 
and I'm not driving where I've already gone, so there's a nice fresh rut. So now we've got the system back in stock mode, switches off, so it should kick in this time and we'll see how different the ride quality is. There's a really bumpy area. Systems engaged and disengaged. You know, I didn't really feel a huge difference between those two. I think there are very, there's very specialized situations where deleting KDSS would actually make a noticeable difference. And even in those situations, I don't think it's a huge difference. For those of you watching elsewhere, this is what our average uh, Florida daily thunderstorm looks like. Just absolute complete hydroplaning madness. So the reason I don't think this mod is very effective is because above 12 miles per hour, in order for the um, KDSS cylinder to remove some of the sway bar stiffness when you hit an obstacle on one side of the vehicle, it has to respond really quickly. And this system was not designed to respond quickly. It's designed to increase articulation during low speed off-road maneuvering. So here is the latest KDSS system and I wish I had it. So this is a blurb from Toyota. The system locks or frees front and rear stay loser bars independently. Okay, that's one difference, right? My sway bars always work together. They're either both freed or they're both locked. It performs meticulous control according to the detected cornering and road conditions thereby maintaining off-road driving performance and ride comfort as well as on-road stability. So the differences here is it talks about ride comfort and it talks about independent control. If you look at the picture, you can see that there's actually two cylinders in the front. So this system is symmetric. Um, so this system's better than mine. It's more complicated, but it's better. It's got a symmetric system in the front, it's got independent control, and it is advertised to improve comfort. So these are the things Toyota had to change to improve the system. Okay, so we touched on it a little bit talking about EKDSS, but what are the major disadvantages of this system? Well, for me, the major disadvantage is the fact that it's asymmetric. So because you only have a cylinder on one side up front and one side in the rear, might as well show you that too. Um, mostly talking about the front here. The system is asymmetric, which means if you drag this truck up with the wheels off the ground, this tire can drop down farther than that tire. And that's because the cylinder is on this side. It also means there's some weird leverage going on here. The pivot point of the sway bar during articulation isn't in the center. So the sway bar isn't doing this, right? That's EKDSS. My sway bar is doing this which means there's unequal leverage being applied to my control arms. It's fine for low speed stuff, but what happens at higher speeds is you have to pump that fluid out of this cylinder for it to flex. The faster you go, the faster the fluid has to um, fill and evacuate this cylinder. Well, if you hit a bump with this tire, it has all of this leverage, right, to, to squirt the cylinder. If you hit a bump over here, it doesn't have much leverage to act actuate the cylinder. So at higher speeds, this type of KDSS can do some weird stuff because it's asymmetric. So in this clip, I'm driving in a very tight 20 mile per hour left circle. And you can see that the boots look really different. And also compared to the spare tire, it looks different. That's because the KDSS cylinder is elongating and the body is rolling a lot more with the fuse removed. So this right here proves that removing the fuse keeps the KDSS from locking the valves down above 12 miles per hour. Now, does that mean it's really gonna help you off-road? Not necessarily. So the next thing we did is some speed bump testing. So we did this test several times and over these speed bumps, it you can't feel a difference with the KDSS cylinder locked out or not. Um, maybe there's some off-road situations where it would be better, I don't know. Um, I feel like this mod's mostly a gimmick and it's mostly just something people wanna do their trucks, they like to mod stuff. I'm definitely not going to spend money to buy a kit to do it. I'm not even sure I'm even going to bother adding a switch and wasting some of my valuable switch real estate to do this. Um, we didn't really notice a difference. I think this is a pretty gimmicky mod. Bumpy dirt road with some ruts and potholes. Um, so Charlie again is going to start recording accelerant data when we get past the tree with the white stripe. And we're going to try to maintain 25 the whole time. Cruise control's on. We're right at 25 at the tree. 
cruise control is set. So this right now, as the light will indicate, is KDSS disabled. So according to all the KDSS mod fanboys, this is a smoother ride. And I'm just gonna stay dead straight in the center of the road. We're gonna collect some data and then we can do some comparisons later on in Excel. This road is rattling my truck apart. No, not really, it's a Toyota, not a Jeep. I'm gonna find the KDSS connector. If you look at the gas pedal and you kind of go up, it's this white connector here with these color wires, this purple, blue, green, white. Really easy to, uh, really accessible once you remove the little cover down here, the little black shield that comes out with one Phillips screw right there. You can see no KDSS light. I just went under there, plugged the computer back in, the KDSS module, and same stretch of road, same speed. I'm gonna start the recording at the white tree again and get the data. All right, so here is the um, X axis, uh, the way of the accelerometer position. This is the up and down, like what you would feel in your butt from the seat um, of that run. The top run is stock. The bottom run is with the KDSS computer completely unplugged. So the um, actuator solenoids are locked open. As you can see, very similar magnitudes. Spikes are in a lot of the same places. Obviously, a lot of uncontrolled variables with this test. My speed wasn't perfect. I couldn't take the exact same track. Um, so I'm not going to bother doing a bunch of analysis and running scripts on this, but um, pretty similar magnitude is what I was trying to figure out. I think that during this test, the KDSS solenoids were probably unlocked for a lot of it. I didn't have the um, voltmeter hooked up yet. But in case someone wanted to see the data, here's some accelerometer data um, kind of comparing the two. The one problem I really have with this mod is that everyone's opinions are very subjective. I hadn't found anyone who did any instrumented testing at all or even videoed the suspension or anything. So that's why I kind of wanted to make this video. Um, that so-called doctor guy got in the comment section last time and bled everywhere. Um, so I wanted to get some more data and put out something a little more conclusive for him and others who are confused about this topic. Um, I'm sure he'll do that again. And thanks for the involvement in the comment section. Um, the sponsors love it. I think it's pretty good and it generates a lot of discussion and that's how people learn is disagreeing with each other. So it's all good. Um, hope you guys find this data useful. If you want to repeat this stuff with your own truck, uh, drop a comment below um, and I'd be happy to help you figure out how I did this testing.